Hey guys, my name is Ismas. Welcome to Top Channel One on One. So if you don't already know, we're going to try and recreate this Alie Alie intro in Blender. So let's yeah, that beat is sick. So yeah, let's do that in Blender. So I'll just open up the application right now and uh, I'll create a new project and uh, let's uh, first get a screenshot of this logo. So it's about here. Something like that, and now uh, we can take a screenshot. Go to Photoshop and I'll paste that there and then crop this out uh, because we want to trace out that logo in Blender, and then now uh, we can uh, extrude other different parts of it. So save that. Let me make sure this is recording. Good, and uh, we are good to go so put this on, desk, on the desktop so we have the logo there and uh, maybe we can also add it here uh, for reference for our reference so we have it there as well okay 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 so first of all let's uh, trace out this of uh, a uh, so let's create a new mesh uh, Hold on shift, press shift A to bring up this add menu, and then go to add. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. I'll go to edit mode. We can we can switch to wireframe mode by hitting Z so that we can see through our mesh, and then we can uh, erase all these, delete all these other vertices so that we, we remain with only one vertice. Move it to the top there. Hit E to extrude, and let's trace out uh, this logo. We can zoom in a bit. And, uh, that. Okay. So we need a bit more resolution here. So we can uh, select that edge or select two of these vertices. Then hit W uh, to bring up the specials menu. And then click subdivide. And then we can make more cuts uh, let's make about three like that and we can push them so that we make uh, that curve curvature curve so we have that and uh, now we can start to fill in uh, these area these faces so that it's not just a wireframe like that so Let's go and do that. So we can uh, go to edge mode, uh, select these two two edges, and then fill them by hitting F. Uh, we can also get this, fill that with that. And uh, let's see, we can subdivide this so that we have this point. We can move this closer to this. But make sure you maintain it as a straight line. Uh, let's go back to edge mode. Face, uh, face. We can also subdivide this so that we can make that face, and then this like this. And uh, if you want, you can just fill this uh, entire uh, face as a as a as an end gun, uh, so that we have that. And you can see if we change to face mode, you can see we have those faces. Uh, so we can extrude now. But uh, before we do that, let's stress out uh, this. Uh, circle. Uh, let's just go add a circle mesh. Uh, shift A, and then add rotate ninety degrees. Let's move it, uh, scale it a bit. Then go to edit mode. Uh, let's go to vertex mode as well. To, so to switch between, uh, so if we go to edge mode, to edit mode, to, to switch between these vertices or edge mode or face mode. You can hit Control Tab to bring up the Select Mode uh, menu, and then you can switch between different modes. So let's select the Edge Mode, and then hit E to extrude, and then Scale In. 
uh, don't worry about moving these around so that they fit that circle because uh, there is some perspective distortion on this image uh, because remember we have already we got it as uh, as an image uh, from a video and that uh, video had uh, some animation so there is that animation bit and uh, there is some perspective distortion as well uh, so let's not worry that much about that uh, now let's delete uh, these faces to add that gap I can uh, move this to there uh, delete uh, these faces yep and move this to around there And see all these edges, all these gaps are parallel to the line, uh, they're opposite to their next two, so you can see. And that's what we're trying to follow. So if you have this font, uh, you can go and find it and use it. So let's try finding a font similar to this and see. So if you go to Google Fonts, and there is fonts, uh, let's try to find a font that looks a bit similar to that to what we have here so let's see let's see let's see if we turn off sh sheriff and let's try searching here directly and see box okay mm. oh we can go to google directly and uh, search for uh box boxy font let's see so if you find it in google you just in google fonts you just click on the font say let's say this is the font you want you just click on this plus button uh, to get this menu selected uh, to get the font selected and then you can download it uh, from here uh, you can save it anywhere on your computer and then you will find it uh, in, and you will access that font via, through blender so let's see if we can find something closer here. I think this can work. So let's download this. So I'll open folder and see where that is located. So it's, it has downloaded into uh, my downloads folder and then in the compressed folder so i will have to first extract this so that i think is called anger poise so let's find that so this one here uh, so it is in that folder so let's type in other uh, text rotate x 90 so it is ali the Thin and then a so this is the text but, uh, we need to use the font similar to what we want so we go to the F uh, for the font properties and then find these front font uh, options and then select uh, the font you want uh, we have it we downloaded it to the uh, downloads folder so let me find that download download user then downloads compressed this and you can see the font is there so you just access it uh, to the folder where you have downloaded it and uh, then click ok uh, click open font and you can see this is uh, the font okay so we have something like this So this is what we have, but uh, the font is not matching to what we want. Uh, you can spend a lot of t you can spend some time to find a font that looks like this, uh, like what you see, uh, like this exactly. But uh, yeah, I don't have that time. So what I can do is either choose a different font or I can trace out this, uh, this uh, logo, uh, this text uh, using the text the use, like in the same way we traced out uh, this. Uh, mesh here yeah. so let's do that so let's add a new mesh new plane I'll rotate 90 degrees I press Z on your keyboard to change to transparency mode uh, so that to wireframe mode now let's move these points around so something like that and 
fail. Now we can come in and delete uh, these points, these faces. And I think we can also delete this face and then we can to add that cut can move this vertex there something like that so you can see we have that and uh, we can also duplicate this x and use it as our i x in the x axis now we can delete all these vertex vertices so we are left with that maybe Move this a bit down. And uh, we can duplicate this again. Delete this face. And uh, duplicate this again. And delete everything else. So we can bring this around there switch to vertex mode so that we can match uh, these to that think about there and, that. and now we can bring this again uh, to there so let's let me save this save this where should i save this uh, i can save this in a new folder called a and so so we have that so let's try to preview the animation again so where is that you can see we have that i think that uh, that's playing that Okay, and you can see at uh, the eye, each letter is separate as an object from all the other, other letters. That's that's why I was also separating them while I was modeling, modeling them. So, and you can see that eye is also separate. So we're going to have to separate that as well. So let's go back, uh, go to eye, select that, uh, hit P to separate loose parts. And you can see each letter can now be animated separately. But now uh, we can center the uh, the pivot point uh, by hitting Control Shift, Control Alt Shift C, and then center origin to geometry. I uh, repeat that to every other thing. So let's see. Okay, these ones are fine. Uh, for this, let's center it uh, to the cursor point. So let's make sure that. So Control Shift Alt C, origin origin to cursor 3d cursor so we have that and uh, we also have this spline that comes a bit late and then that one here and goes through through the animation like that so let's let's do that let's go to blender again uh, let's add a curve a bezier I'll rotate it in the x axis 90 degrees and then uh, let's create a path for that car so then let's do vector automatic so that we have something that is smoother so around like that okay so it's there i think we can trace the path directly there so Maybe we can also make it a bit three-dimensional by moving these in a different axis. Maybe we can start off like this and uh, about like that. So then, so let's tr start extruding uh, the different elements. So we forgot, I think, to, uh, to cut out a space for the top part. So let's delete those faces and. Uh, move this 
to around that. Now we can start extruding. Uh, you can select the mesh, go to edit mode, select all faces, and then extrude in the X direct in that uh, in the Y axis. But uh, uh, this, I think, is a lot of you don't really get that much control doing that. And uh, so let's hit X to Ctrl Z to undo that. Uh, instead, we're going to use a modifier. So if you select the mesh and go to modifier, uh, we can add the extrude modifier. So uh, the solidify modifier. Uh, but uh, let's first apply the scale. Control, Control A to bring up the apply menu and then the scale uh, so that we make sure so that every so that we don't have artifacts. Uh, so let's increase the thickness thickness to about let's say 0 0.25 maybe 0 0.3 and uh, let's use the same modifier here and solidify uh, let's also apply the scale uh, then let's do 0.3 as well okay you see it's going in the opposite direction because uh, the normals are in are facing the wrong direction so we can go to edit mode select all faces hit ctrl n to recalculate uh, the normals so then you can see okay so it seems uh, some of the normals are flipped in the right direction and uh, some of some are not so let's go to front view let's see so select these the faces that have their normals are facing the wrong direction i uh, select just every face of at least one face of the of each separate a mesh and then hit ctrl p a con hit ctrl l to select those uh, elements and then ctrl n uh, to recalculate the normals you can see they are still are facing the other way and now let's hit inside so that they're facing the same direction as everything else and uh, so let's do the same for these uh, let's let's first select all and uh, ctrl a to apply the scale then let's add uh, a solidify then point three three uh, if you do that uh, you can select all the other meshes and then hit shift R to repeat what you have done uh, so let's let's first do this try this on the on this uh, I here L uh, let's add the modifier mm, modifier solidify add a thickness of 0 0.3 and then select the uh, the rest of the meshes and then shift R you can see then select this shift r shift r shift r uh, but now we have to come in and edit to give them the same thickness so let's do this 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.3 and that's what we have but you see uh, the edges are too sharp and uh, they they're not as smooth as this so what we can do is come in and add another bevel modifier and, and add another modifier uh, the bevel modifier and uh, uh, but before we do that let's see let's see what should we do should we do that i'm not on this i'm not on this uh element here because it ha is surrounded uh surface it's a circle and uh, if we add the bevel modifier it will add those facets there it will try to add uh the bevel on the facets so let's not do that here uh, but we, let's try it on this one and see how it will look. I think uh, that's okay. We just need to reduce uh, the width. And then add more segments. You can see. Uh, but now because this also has a round surface here, uh, this it also it is also creating those facets there. So let's delete uh, this modifier here and also let's apply this modifier so that we can round off this we want to use a subdivision sub uh, modifier to round off this corner here so let's add that control 2 to add a sub sub a subdivision modifier or you can just find it in the modifiers and then subdivision surface 
uh, but you see it is making our element a bit crooked so we can uh, solo this element uh, by hitting the uh, forward slash on your numpad let's go to edit mode select the different edges uh, that are supposed to be sharp so if you hold down alt and then right select right click to select an edge we will select a loop of that edge so you will select the entire loop of that edge so let's select this as well this uh, this and uh, let's see let's select that and uh, let's first turn off this just to make sure that we have everything selected select that this uh, this and this this that that and and this one here so i think we have every sharp edge every edge that is supposed to be sharp <coughs> selected now we can round off these edges by holding down control b to bring up the, to to do a bevel to add bevels to those edges and uh, if you use you can use the old middle mouse button to scroll need to add more segments let's add about uh, three or two and you can see now we have that so now if we add uh, the sub oh, so it's already there but uh, you can see now this part here is much smoother than uh, what we had before and uh, if you want we can increase uh, the view I'm not sure why we're getting this at facts here. Uh, so let's, let's first undo the, these bevels so that we can clear this uh, artifact that is coming up here. So let's add this and then control B. comes let me have let's see if we add a loop cut here you now what what we can do is just select let's first turn this off and go to edge mode I select I select no, let's just hit K to bring up the, the knife tool and then cut through these vertices here and connect them like so. And let's see if we have fixed. So we have fixed that on the top side. So let's fix that on the back side. So get a knife, a knife tool, and then connect uh, these vertices like that. And now we have cleared that. I think everything else is looking good. Okay, so it seems we didn't select this edge. Uh, that's why it's rounded and it's not, it's not supposed to be. So let's go to edit mode, uh, select uh, that edge. Select that uh, up to here, control select to select that loop and uh, we can add that there so that is sharp as well uh, so this is what we have uh, so far now let's uh keep the backspace to unsolo this and then let's work on this uh, so we also want it to be as curved as this surface so let's hit ctrl 2 to bring to add uh, the sub surf modifier uh, but uh, because we want to have rounded edges, uh, we can apply, we, ha we want to have sharp edges on these corners. Let's apply the solid mo the solidify modifier. Then we can add uh, those edges. So you just select all the loops that are going to be sharp, that are supposed to be sharp.
that. So I s let me slow this as well. Uh, let's see if I have everything selected. So we are missing this. Then Control B to add uh, the bevel. So about there. Let's add an extra loop. So we have something like that. Okay, maybe there are two shapes. So let's undo. Then add Control B. something like that. And now we can smooth out uh, this, getting the smooth. If you want this to be sharper, you can add another loop here. So we have something like that. Let's unsolo this so that we have that. Uh, because these uh, letters, uh, these letters are going to be sharp, uh, we don't really have to turn them into editable we don't really have to apply the modifier. We can come in and apply uh, the bevel modifier, add the bevel modifier, reduce the width, then add uh, the segments, maybe increase the width a bit. Uh, let's see, can we copy this object? Uh, let's try copy the modifiers and see. <coughs> let's select all these other then control L. Yes, yeah, so if you have, so if you have uh, the, if you apply the, if you add the modifiers to one element, I uh, can select all the other elements you have to have this, you want to have the same modifiers and select the modifier you want to copy from uh, last and then hit control L uh, to bring these make links and then copy the modifiers to uh, those uh, other elements. So we have that. Now we can add a smooth modifier. Maybe let's leave it at that. And, uh, yeah. So if you want to make these corners more smooth, you just increase uh, the number of segments. But I think for our tutorial that three segments will be enough. So yeah. Now let's work on this uh, spline that uh, comes after so that for that we can add i think a cylinder can work let's add maybe two low segments and uh, let's scale it down rotate in the x-axis scale it down scale in the x-axis edit mode and then let's add a few more loops so Control r and then use the mouse wheel to add more extra loops so we have that we can add I think uh, a subdivision surface, then smooth out everything. Then we can also add from that, we can add a curve modifier, select this curve we have here. Now you can see now we have the mesh there. Uh, let's move it closer so that is deformed directly by the curve and then the Y. Now, if we move this in the x-axis, you see we have that animation, but I think it's too, too, too big, so we can scale it down a bit. Maybe move it to that position, and then scale it uh, so that it meets. It's, it's the same scale as uh, what we see in the background. So, scale x or scale y, x, yeah, I think in the x-axis, around that. Now you can see we can animate it as that. So we have done the modeling. Now let's work on the animation. So let's preview the animation again. Okay, so let's first see in Blender. Let's set up our camera. Uh, control zero to center the camera to the view. So let's zoom in, move the camera closer to around there. <coughs> let's expand our timeline, our timeline, and then start recording. 
Uh, let's play this back again. Okay, so these elements are supposed to be separate as well, so we need to do the same for this glue part. And yeah, so they are separate, and now we just need to center the uh, origin, origin to geometry, origin to geometry, origin to geometry. So let's see this again. Okay, so let's I think it's let's duplicate this camera. Uh, let's uh, s split this view into two and change this to camera view. And uh, let's duplicate this camera. Uh, can make sure we turn off recording, and we can subdivide this and change this to uh, the key the drop sheet and turn on, on to show selected and let's move to this camera let's first delete those keyframes and then control zero to move the to, to switch to the selected camera let's preview this okay so it seems uh, let's first mark uh, the final location for all these uh, elements so make sure you have a recording set set on then select uh, let's go to about 100 frames then select it each element select all elements in the scene that you need animated and this and hit hit G and then and then the middle mouse the right mouse button to confirm those keyframes so we have our final keyframes now let's move to about 60 frames and uh, we can rotate this on the x-axis is it i think it's in the x-axis so if we play back we have that And um, and then we have uh, this element here coming in from around this position like this and then rotate in the x-axis. So it seems this other element here comes in, let's rotate it uh, like this, then bring it off camera. And uh, I think we have a rotation in this camera, so yes. Uh, you know what? I think we can select all elements and uh, move these keyframes to the beginning, to around like that. And uh, now let's animate uh, this camera a bit. So we start off. This is the final point of that keyframe. Then let's rotate it something like this okay this is takes a while to start playing so let's do that as well and uh, let's also
So it's not going to be too accurate, but uh, we just want to get something that looks like it. So let's put it this in the Y. Is it? Okay, so it seems that uh, this camera is supposed to rotate. From the opposite direction. So it should be. something like that and there maybe we can zoom in the camera a bit so starts off like that then comes in So we have that animation. Uh, maybe what uh, the next thing before we complete the animation, what we can do is work on the materials right now. So uh, let's first switch to cycles. Let's switch to cycles here, and uh, let's add an environment, an HDR. So let's go environment, uh, background color, environment, and then let's add an HDR. Uh, image so textures and these ones textures is let's use this should we and uh, we have let's select the first material element uh, let's change this to node editor uh, add it give it a new material uh, let's uh, switch to let's add uh, the principal shader connect that remove that and then let's give it uh, this blue. Change it a bit. Make it a bit. Uh, so let's reduce the roughness. Uh, give it a, metal a metallic look. And uh, we can add that some anisotropic. Uh, so to make it a brushed uh, metal add some rotation and add some sheen to give it that some f some kind of gradient you see there and uh, let's see let's also change uh, the color space so if you go to our scene editor so to this button here and uh, you can find I think it's in this is it uh, let's see let's see let's see yeah I think it's this button and then color management can change this from from the default to filmic and change this to film log and uh, let's change this to high contrast and uh, let's see what else can we do let's hit shift b but I select only render uh, what is in the camera and let's select these as elements let's add a new material uh, what we can do is select this copy this material and uh, paste that on this element so we can remove these two and uh, just change uh, the color to a white and maybe let's make it a little bit darker and uh, we can select other 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 elements and uh, apply that uh, material to them and 
right let's see if the texts are using this uh, material so control L link our materials okay so this is what we have so far and uh, So let's switch back to um, solid mode and uh, continue with the animation. So let's play this back. You can see we have that. Now we need to switch uh, to a different camera. let's go back so what you can do after this you can render this out and then you can render this out and then uh, redo the animation with a different camera or what I like to do if I don't want to waste that much time I can uh, just go to object mode uh, then select everything including the cameras and the light shift D to duplicate everything and then move them to a different layer go to that layer select everything make sure we in the dope sheet we have only selected modes uh, only include uh, channels that are selected and then select every other keyframe then delete uh, those keyframes uh, let's first undo remove this uh, record stop recording right now also make sure you are at the final resting position of all the elements now rest, let's redo let's make uh, the animation for this for the second camera so let's go to the second camera control z control zero to view that camera let's zo zoom out a bit now let's work on this animation uh, but uh, what we want to do is to switch between uh, this camera to the second camera uh, so that will only render one time one single time without having so that will only render once instead of rendering once and then coming back to the project and then rendering again a different camera so because now these are in the same position as the first one what we can do is just move the entire scene to a different location so that if we have this layer on we don't see any of that now we can go to camera one then at about here i think about here this is when uh, the camera switches to the second camera and add a marker so let's add the first marker here and then we can link this camera to the first marker so if we go to the menu we can do map camera control p So you, you, you make sure you have this camera selected and you're viewing from it and then you are on that frame where the marker is and then click view and then bind camera to markers. So uh, this camera is now binded uh, to our camera to this marker and you can see it here. Then on this here, on this marker here, we can go, we can switch to our second camera. So this, and then 
select the marker, you bind camera. So now, you see, we start from there and then switch to this view. But you see, we see this, uh, these other, uh, the other scene in this, in this scene as well. So what we can do is switch to this camera. I'm doing this uh, so that I don't have to go through the entire thing, but uh, I, so that I don't have to come back to the same project. Uh, so, but you can choo choose it, choose to do it differently. But this is a simple scene that I can go, I can get away with uh, doing this. Uh, so let's move this. Let's see. I still is it okay? These are the letters uh, we haven't animated yet. So. And I don't think they are visible in the animation before we switch to the camera. Yeah, so they don't come in before until uh, the second camera. So we can select these. I think they're these. And move them to a layer we won't be rendering. So we can start up. See now, and then switch to this. So for this, let's go to around 100. Select all the layers, all the f all the elements that need to be animated on the camera. That are even the yet, and then switch on recording and uh, mark keyframes for them. And uh, let's go to about here. Now let's start working on this animation. So we can move them in this Z axis like this. Also move this in the Z axis. How do this come up? Okay, so, so these come from down so we can move them to that as well and maybe move them forward a bit now we can rotate them we can give them different lo rotations and maybe also move them scatter them around have something like that so let's add maybe in between here can uh, yeah I think that's okay so then we can go to the front and uh, also go to this keyframe give this some bit of animation Now, if we play back, we have something like that. So this animation ends at around 120, so I'll end my timeline there. And uh, let's continue working here. And uh, so at around here, this should also start animating. So it comes off from around there. And then at the last keyframe, it should be around out of frame I think grab X push it out we should also give it a material because I think we forgot so now but you see there is that pause uh, between uh, there is that a space where we don't have anything so we can uh, select go into this scene uh, select all the elements that are animated and then in the keyframes also make sure that you have only include our selected channels let's move these keyframes a bit in front so that by the time we switch out uh, to this camera we are seeing some of them already flying in into the scene and uh, so let's see let's 
see that's what we have there so we can switch to uh, let's try metacup and uh, only rendered and uh, for the shading control to camera alpha yes so let's remove this background image so that's what we have so now you can go on and render so let's first render this and see go to rendered mode see that's what uh, we have Let's make sure that uh, this is set with the right material. So, solid mode, go to display and check that. Let's switch off that and link these materials. Now, if we go to shaded mode, graded mode that's what we have you can see it's close to what uh, this is what this looks like you can see that's what we have so i'll go on and render this uh to show you how it looks and maybe i can even add uh, the denoiser to remove some of that noise I will leave this to 50% just to make sure that everything uh, is fast. I uh, change the output from PNG to, uh, if you want to, to, yeah, let me just put this to, uh, uh, to FFmpeg and then go to the encoding. Uh, yes, I think H246 will work. Uh, preset H246 in MP4 and uh, we can now hit render